Welcome back to another episode of Going Ultra. This time I'm reviewing Ultraman Episode 8. And uh, I have to say that I think there's a big problem with this episode, and I hope I do not sound like uh, a certain channel <laughs> that focuses on exposing plot holes, because plot holes aren't really that important. But uh, I'll save that discussion uh, till the end so that I don't, uh, I don't know, sound like a big whiner. Anyway, uh, overall, I liked this episode a lot. Uh, I'm glad that we are done dealing with the mystery of the uh, serial killer uh, or the so-called serial killings of the uh, Rena Sayama fans. And I'm wondering what her role is going to be in the show now because she knows who Ultraman is. Uh, she held Ultraman listen to her and hear her out when she was talking about being a real hero of justice by not just like allowing people to get hurt. Um, you know, despite him having other heroic actions. And, uh, yes, I am not sure where they're going to go with, with her character from here and, uh, like, how the show will transition. And I also don't know if the story of the manga, uh, like, are we at the halfway point or is there a lot more to come? I believe the manga is a full uh, 12 issues, and I think typically people say that a manga is adapted, like, two or three chapters, which I don't know if a chapter equals a Tonkabon or if a chapter equals, like, one of the chapters in a Tonkabon that... You know, there's like 200 pages, each chapter is, I don't know, 10, 11 pages. So, I don't know how much longer. Um, I'd be very happy if this show got multiple seasons because uh, it's really enjoyable and I'm really liking the story so far, uh, but I definitely want to see more. So, Bemyalar is back again. It's looking good, looking fresh. Um, I'm beginning to wonder by his actions in this episode and by the fact that when he took leave of the, um, of, you know, the concert <laughs> of, uh, you know, Ultraman and Ultraman 7, uh, he told them, he instructed them to listen very carefully to everything they were about to hear. And, um, Shinjiro asked him, why are you obsessed with me? Why are you stalking me? And he said, because you're trying to become Ultraman. He also refers to himself as Bemular, the first enemy, when he gives his name. Uh, I don't remember if, well, I don't know if you know this, but um, the original name of Ultraman was going to be Bemular, so I'm wondering if things are going to get slightly more complex because of that and what it, all he's doing in the show so far. Jumping away from Bemular and back to uh, Rena for a minute, um, I do not think her involvement in the show is to be a trophy or anything like that for um for Shinjiro. That's not how she's being used now. Um, he may think she's beautiful. He may enjoy her music. I don't know. He doesn't say anything about her music. He's just, oh, that's the idol. Um, and typically, I believe these women are picked, or these girls are picked because they are, you know, conventionally attractive to the audience uh, that the, uh, you know, company is marketing them to. Um, so, yeah, he may be attracted to her, but he's listening to her words and he's doing, uh, trying to do what she said. And I think it's a pretty cool way to use her character and utilize an idol character like this in, uh, in a story like this. And I want to, I'm, I'm fighting every, or, or I'm fighting very, uh, strongly. Uh, I said that weird, uh, to not talk about junk record of last hero by Kiyosimiya, which also featured an idol in somebody close to an idol being a, uh, a henshin hero. Um, yeah, I'm going to fight it. I'm not going to do it. Instead, I'm going to talk about the, uh, cool action. That was a large part of this episode. Um, I've got a little complaint about it, but the action was all well executed. I, I've complained about the reasoning behind it, but um, we got to see this uh, alien with this uh, with these stripes, who you know was this bad bad man, allegedly because he was uh, you know murdering and attacking people, um, and uh, you know he he's very tough because he's able to face off against both uh, Ultraman and Ultraman Seven, and uh, you know it's got to be tough because we've seen other kaiju get beat handily by one of them alone. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, it's cool to see all the uh, sword action. And it's cool to see them uh, doing some great teamwork. Uh, I was really impressed by the teamwork that Shinjiro and um, and Morboshi did together because uh, you know Morboshi doesn't really like Shinjiro, but of course to save people, you know he's willing to. And his thing isn't that he doesn't want to save people. It's more that he is very much focused on executing and killing aliens who um, he thinks deserves to be killed and executed for their crimes, which, uh, you know, I get, I get that to some extent. There's this bit that was funny to me where um, the, uh, 
you know, the guy trying to kill Rena, a Dodd, I'll just say a Dodd for now, um, says, you know, are you going to save this idol or are you going to save her fans? And, you know, which will you do? And, um, you know, you'll have to kill me to stop these bombs from going off and that stuff. And um, more bushy says, well, hmm, that'll be a real difficult struggle. Okay, yeah, I'll kill you. Like, you know, it's not a problem. And then Bamula shows up and things all get way more complicated. But then we get this really neat um, pose. If you're looking at the video version, um, there's a pose that's happening uh, that is very similar to something that happened in Spider-Man when, like, the Daily Bugle was collapsing or partially collapsing or whatever. Spider-Man was stuck under it, and he had to lift it up from off of himself and, uh, you know, do whatever. And it was very heroic, and it's kind of an iconic thing. I feel like there's one shot, one angle that's probably in the manga that very directly references that. And... I think it's very cool, uh, not just because it's a reference, but because it's a reference that works. And on its own, even if you don't know the reference, it really works. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, you know, Shinjiro's trying to live out his ideal of being this hero, trying to be the ideal Ultraman. And I think he's doing a decent job of it. Um, and I'm really impressed by how... Uh, he's able to get himself out of the situation. And once again, if you're watching the video version, um, I'm going to show you right now, he does a really cool thing to save all the people uh, who are threatened by this uh, you know, piece of the roof or lighting rig coming down on them. It just looks so heroic and cool, and I'm glad that he was able to save all those people, and it was just a really awesome display of all the power that he has. Um, so now to talk about Adad. So Adad is from the... Uh, Oh, gosh, what is it? The Star Cluster Collective. Um, he's like one of their immigration <laughs> agents, and uh, he's actually not a villain. He was posing as one of the villains or one of the aliens who was uh, murdering people. Um, and it turns out, um, which this is a pretty neat twist, and, and I'll talk about it, uh, that the people who – it wasn't the Igaru Prince specifically who was involved – well, it wasn't the Igor Prince who specifically was directing uh, an alien, you know, a beefier, stronger, tougher alien than him to go menace and harass and beat up and eventually kill um, Renasayama fans. It was humans, apparently, who were fellow uh, Renasayama otaku. I don't know if otaku uh, applies to idol fans or not, but hey, I'm using it. Um, but he was involved. They took his transmitter thing from him that connected him to... Uh, any alien or, or just a particular alien. I don't know how that works, but it doesn't really matter. Connects him to the alien that, who ended up, you know, turning people into bloody smears on the wall. Um, which the one episode where they showed a guy right before he got killed and how he was pleading for his life and terrified, that was really effective. I thought that was good. Uh, it doesn't take away the fact that the uh, blood smear is a little, a little comical, a little cartoony, but that's fine. Um, it, it's still grim and grisly, um, but just, you know, with a light comedic edge. Uh, so I really do understand the Adad um, being undercover and being this, you know, immigration officer or whatever for the whatever space alliance. Um, but uh, gosh, that was a uh, interesting, convoluted. All the bombs that he said were going to go off and kill everybody were little, you know, firework things. Um, so it was an illusion. And Bemular inserted himself into the situation, but Bemular wasn't an ally of Adad. Um, Bemular just inserted himself in the situation uh, possibly to test Shinjiro because, like I said before, he told Shinjiro that he's following him, he's stalking him, so to speak, because he's trying to become Ultraman. And I don't know what that means. Is he trying to train him to become Ultraman, to be the best Ultraman he can be? I don't know. It's a little unclear, but that's not a problem for me. Um, I'm intrigued. I'm excited. It's not frustrating where there are all these little mysteries and the, I feel like the story is telling me, oh, there's all these things that we're keeping from you uh, that you'll find out later. Isn't it so uh, you know, intriguing? Because it, it legitimately is intriguing because we're getting reveals along the way and we're just kind of finding about, out about the wider world that Shinjiro inhabits as Ultraman now. And uh, something interesting about Adad, like the guy teleports away, he doesn't even have a spaceship. Um, how is that possible? I didn't know that was a, a thing. Um, but something really fun about that that I like is that he comes along and he kind of trounces uh, Ultraman and Ultra 7 and uh, he does it with a smile. Um, by the way, that is Steve J uh, Stephen J. Bloom or Steve Bloom. I, uh, I took a picture of the credits afterwards and sure enough, it's him. Anyway, um, 
I like the idea that he beats them so easily because I don't know if Ultraman, the original Ultraman, like Alien, is from the most advanced society in uh, the galaxy or the universe. Or if he's from one of the least advanced societies or, or you know, somewhere in the middle or, or what. But his society or I guess what I've gleaned about Ultraman from other Ultraman content is that like they're all these really righteous people. Uh, aliens, whatever, and they, they're they do-gooders, and they, they do good. Um, that's what they do. <laughs> uh, so, like, is a Dodds race, um, are they also do-gooders, or are they, um, I don't know, like, where are they? And, uh, like, relatively, is his species supposed to be way more powerful than an Ultraman, or what? It, it's very confusing. Um, but it makes me happy that there's these other advanced civilizations in the story and that some of them are way beyond humans. Like I mentioned a Dodd teleporting as opposed to getting in a spaceship or whatever. Um, like they're beyond human and that's really cool because they should be. If they are aliens, they should be beyond human and really be fantastical and uh, kind of dazzle us with what they can do, the things that are mundane to them that are so neat to us. So that all was a lot of fun even if I don't know what it all means or where exactly it's going. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, I'm going to once again advocate that you check out the uh, show notes. Um, there will be show notes for this. Uh, I put them for seven. I still need to take the time to go back and link them for the other episodes, but they'll be there, and you can easily find them by following the link and going to mjmunoz.com. Uh, you can, uh, if you like what I'm doing, you can give me a, a tip by supporting me on coffee. Uh and uh, also please like, share, subscribe, uh, ring that notification bell so you can catch uh, the next one of these. And uh, yeah, let's do it.